Well, hello, everybody. How are you? This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Started about a minute early. That's okay. I can do that. It's Monday. What can I say? What can I do? What can I say? How can I? How? How can I work with you today to understand what is literally going on? What can I do? Is there anything that I can do to help you understand? What is it on this 3rd of March 2014 that you need to know? I'm kind of curious. Kind of curious. We're going to get into some subjects today. I don't know. I'm going to go the full hour. I don't know how many subjects I'm going to get into in that hour because you know me. Now, the thing that I want to get into, first of all, is this situation with the wrong mouse in my hand, uh, with this situation that is going on with these truckers in Illinois, or the Illinois state said, hey, if you're Muslim, it's okay. You don't have to drive if you have a religious reason to, blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, I'm done with the stupidity coming out of government. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I don't care if it's your city government, county government, state government, federal government. I don't care. You people are the dumbest people on the face of this planet if you don't think that the Muslim Brotherhood is controlling how your state, how your city council, how your whole, uh, you know, the presence of your politics and your system is being controlled. I don't know how you cannot see that. And it's being controlled by the powers that be in the Muslim Brotherhood. And what the Muslim Brotherhood doesn't understand is the fact that once they are used to the fullest extent of their capability, the powers that be will eat them up, chew them up, spit them out, and kill them. They don't understand that. And if they do, they think they're going to get 72 virgins, and they're not. So anyway, what I want to talk about today is the fact that uh, from CharismaNews.com, I mean, this is an interesting story, considering from CharismaNews.com, and I'm going to forego the break at the five after mark. This is, uh, again, from charismanews.com. Christians' utilities shut off for refusing to participate in religious ceremony. You might not think that's, that's a confusing headline. Do you not agree with that? 25% Protestant families have had their water and electricity supplies disconnected and have effectively been put under house arrest in Mexico because of their refusal to participate in traditionalist Catholic religious ceremonies. On February 11th, village authorities cut off Protestant families' water supply. Two days later, their electricity supply was also disconnected in chains and ropes uh, and civilian guards were placed around the family's homes. <clears throat> in order to further isolate them. On the same day, one member of the group was arbitrarily detained by village authorities in prison for more than 24 hours while he attempted to reconnect his water while under the supervision of state officials and police. Yeah, it gets better, folks. Village authorities in uh, Union Juarez, located in La Trin uh, Trinitaria Municipality in the state of Ch uh, Chiapas, also detained the police officers for 10 hours. Traditionalist Catholic village. Authorities were demanding that families who belong to the local Mount Tabor Evangelical Church contribute financially to religious festivals 
and have said they will not permit the families to reconnect their services or receive visitors until they pay 500 pesos, uh, approximately $38 each. The village authorities are justifying their actions as in line with the law of uses and customs, which gives uh, indigenous populations autonomy to exercise traditional forms of justice and to protect their culture. The situation follows an escalation of discriminatory behavior toward a group of Protestant Christians in the municipality beginning 2010, when the local village assembly blocked their access to firewood and refused them permission to attend uh, or participate in in the village or in village assembly meetings. According to Luis Antonio Herrera, a local activist representing the victims, the families have pointed out that under the Mexican Constitution, they cannot legally be forced to be involved in festivals or ceremonies linked to religions to which they do not ascribe. The victims have filed a complaint with the National Commission for Human Rights. Dr. Jorge Le Galindo, director of Impulso 18, Christian Solidarity Worldwide's partner organization in Mexico, says, quote, Unfortunately, this case is not atypical to Chiapas, where village authorities regularly attempt to impose the majority religion on all inhabitants of the village. Crimes like this take place with impunity, contributing to a worsening of, uh, of the situation, as can be seen in this case. State authorities should intervene in the early stages to prevent increasing violation of human rights, and those responsible for criminal acts must be held accountable in a court of law." Unquote. Mervyn Thomas, chief executive of Christian Solidarity Worldwide, says, quote, We call on the government of Chappas State and as well as the federal government to take urgent action to protect the fundamental rights of the people of La Union Juarez. It is unacceptable that access to electricity and water be used as a tool to enforce religious belief in a modern democracy with constitutional protections for religious freedom. We are also uh, concerned that without swift action on the part of the government officials and based on a trajectory of similar cases, the situation could deteriorate further and lead to violence. Those who are responsible for the criminal acts committed thus far, including the deprivation of basic services, water, electricity, and arbitrary, arbitrary detention, must be prosecuted, unquote. Now, in my view, from my perspective, I look at it this way. Either a person has fundamental human and civil rights protected by, number one, God, number two, the protection of the document of a constitution or a similar uh, version of a Bill of Rights, should be able to conduct their lives in such a way to where they're happy. If a government, such as the tyrannical government, the socialistic government of, of Mexico and of the United States, if they decide that, no, one religion is going to be enough and we don't care what religion you are, you're going to ascribe to our religion or participate in festivals, uh, you know, based off our uh, off of the religion of the state, then uh, that to me is communism. That to me is totalitarianism. That to me is fascism. That to me is socialism. By the way, did you know that the whole country of Mexico is run by drug cartels? Yeah, I know. I know. We got some some uh, cooperation from. Uh, the Mexican uh, army and also the United States DEA and all that, you know, taking down, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, this recent drug lord. But the only reason why they do that, and you can go look this up yourself, the only reason why our governments are attacking those big drug lords, you know, that make billions and billions and billions of dollars a year or millions of dollars a year be more realistic. Do you know why they go out and, and, and attack these and, and capture these drug lords? Because neither one of our governments, the Mexican government or the U.S. government, likes the competition. 
Now, getting back to the religious aspect of this of this uh, story, the authorities shut off utilities for Christians who refuse to participate in religious ceremonies. And that's from charismanews.com. It's linked up there on the Wayne S. Pierce Show uh, Facebook page. Getting back to that, the bottom line is this. Government, I don't care who you are. The governments, the leaders, the states, the county, the city, all of them need to stay the hell out of our churches. Yes, I said it. I'm a minister and I'm very unorthodox. You won't find anyone like me because I'm not a, religion, a religionist. I'm a realist. I see it how it is. I know uh, the backstories on most of these things. I know why uh, these countries are trying to um, suppress Christians. I know, I know why they do it. I mean, you can see it every day. You yourself can see it. Even if you don't go to church, you can see it. So let me ask all of you who don't go to church, who don't even venture off into that area, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that everyone has a right to worship the way they want? Okay. Do you believe that everybody has a right to worship their deity of choice the way they want? If the answer is yes, then you should be pissed off at the authorities cutting off Christians' uh, utilities in, uh, in Mexico. Even if you don't go to church yourself. Because the next step in that parade, folks, is they're going to cut. They're, they're going to come to you and say, do you believe that the president's doing good? Do you believe that this country or whatever? And, they're, they're, and if you say no, you think he's a jackass, they're going to cut you off. I know, I know, that's extreme. I know that. I know that. I understand that. But what makes you think our government wouldn't do that to us too? They already have. They already have. They've already done that. Okay? I don't know why people want to continue to think that our government is just a fantastic place and and people just want to come here and uh, Obama's not doing any, you know, anything bad or anything like that. I, what planet are you people on? Actually, no. What planet are you people from? Do you have your heads lodged so far in an orifice of your body that you cannot think? It's, it's amazing to me. It's just amazing to me. Like this one from our local news station here, KOLO8 News Now. People are crowded into the Idaho State House Lincoln, uh, Lincoln uh, Auditorium waiting to testify before the House State Affairs Committee about a bill that would allow student staff and others to carry guns on college campuses. I myself believe that everybody should. I believe everybody should. Staff, utility workers there, everybody. Why is that? Okay. Well, because. Do you want another Columbine? Do you want another new town? By the way, those two were both set up by our own government. Well, if that's the case, then all of you that stand on the Second Amendment better get to Connecticut right now. The DailySheeple.com and other publications have said uh, similar things to this. Connecticut Patriot Group Fights Back Against Confiscation Order. Yes. And they literally said, we are armed and we are familiar with the finer points of marksmanship. The war on liberty is coming to a head in Connecticut, with tens of thousands of gun owners have refused to comply with their state government's gun registration laws. Officials have literally ordered those who failed to meet the registration deadline to surrender their firearms or face arrest. 
Quote, the state of Connecticut is now demanding that gun owners across the state turn in all newly banned unregistered firearms and magazines or face felony arrest. The state police special licensing firearms unit, or let me say that correctly, the state police special licensing and firearms unit began mailing out notices to gun owners who attempted to register their firearms and accessories with the state, but did not do so in time for the January 1st deadline of Connecticut's newly enacted gun law. The law bans the sale of magazines holding over 10 rounds and assault rifles, that's in quotes, manufactured after 1994 and requires that residents who possessed either before the ban to register them with the state. It doesn't take a stretch of the imagination to understand that the enforcement of this law can only come at the barrel of a gun. Therefore, we can conclude that we may soon see SWAT-style raids on the homes of suspected lawbreakers. Besides, we're talking about gun confiscation. You can, uh, you can be fully assured that the state will not knock nicely. They won't be asking residents to exist their homes or exit their homes. Excuse me. They're going in full force, but the Americans simply don't take well to being told what to do, especially as it relates to their Second Amendment rights. These unreasonable demands, which have yet to pass muster with the U.S. Supreme Court, have prompted Mike Vanderborg of Connecticut's Sipsy Street Irregulars to go on the offensive. Earlier this week, Vanderborg publicly posted the names and addresses, phone numbers, and provided direct access to pictures of all Connecticut legislature, le legislators involved with passage of the gun confiscation bill, saying that since the government has, its, uh, has a list, it, quote, seems obvious to me that it is thus only fair to list those anti-constitutional tyrants, unquote. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Let me put this on the Wayne S. Pierce Show Facebook page as soon as I copy and paste. <laughs> Let me put this. That's on uh, the, uh, the Free America Radio Facebook page, by the way. Uh, you can go to Free America Radio on Facebook and scroll on down. You'll see it there. Uh, and um, I got I. I got to say this, and I'm going to be very blunt with the politicians that are out there right now. Okay, two things, folks. I'm I'm speaking directly to you, politicians out there. Two things, Mr. Council Member, Ms. Council Member, Governors, Representatives, Congressmen. Two things. Let me make this very clear. What part of shall not be infringed don't you understand? And secondly, you step out in the streets to try to confiscate the people's guns. Well, they'll give them to you. Barrel first. I stand behind... I stand behind those that want to civilly protest peacefully in the streets. I do not stand behind those that condone violence. But when you come after the general public in a violent way, you will be met with resistance. So I, Mr. and Mrs. Politician, you better turn in your license to practice law. You better get down off of that city council or out of your congressional seat because you are not a patriot. I know, by the way, by the way, Diane Feinstein is the worst piece of garbage on the face of this planet. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them in. Ms. Feinstein, why don't you retire? Your husband makes billions and billions of dollars off contracts. You pushed through your legislation and got him backdoor deals to make that kind of money. 
and you bribed all of your special interest groups and your and your lobbyists because that's what it is lobbyists do nothing but bribe and special interest groups do nothing but get the money and spread it around I'm going to call out every single politician right now. Every single one of them in Washington, D.C. Every single last one of them. Every single governor. Every single city council member. Everybody. I've got you in my crosshairs. And, no pun intended, and you've got 90 days. Every single politician in America right now. You've got 90 days. 90 days days 90 days from the 3rd of March 2014 to either arrest President Obama and everybody within his little inner circle and get this country back to the hands of the people and make it right or you are going to be arrested for treason against the people of the United States and the Constitution of the United States of America. I'm calling on you to do that. And I'm putting all of you on notice. Anybody in the sound of my voice in America right now can do the same thing to their governors, to their legislators, but I'm putting all of the politicians on notice. You've got 90 days to go in to the White House and arrest each and every single one of those criminals and charge them with, with uh, treason against the American people or the American people will come and arrest you for violations of the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and treason against the people of the United States of America. Now, I'm only one man saying this, but there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people out there that can make that happen. The American Spring on May, uh, on, on, on May 16th is going to happen. Anticipated anywhere between a million people to 30 million people. I suggest we see who runs this country. And if it's not you and I, then you know it's somebody behind the scenes. Don't you think? <clears throat> so you're all in my crosshairs. No pun intended. I don't know what you're going to do. I have no idea how you're going to do it. But it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Because I've said it before and I'll say it again. I get, I, it, things are moving so quickly. Things are changing so rapidly that I have to say this. Prior to or just after the midterm elections, President Obama is going to suspend the Constitution and set himself up as a continual dictator in this country, probably with the help of some communist countries around the world. I'm just saying. Just putting it out there. I hope that doesn't happen. And I'm just speculating. Misfit, 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 is a misfit. Zano. Ignorant of hygiene. Destructive, disorderly, and totally disrespectful. It's the 515 with Zamo on Zamo Radio. AM 1700, Daytona Beach, Holly Hill. And Southnet One. <gasps> the hottest new talk radio show is on Revolution Radio. The BK Factor talks about news, religion, politics, and more. BK adds his opinion to all of it. The BK Factor airs Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific Time, noon to 2 Eastern. If you miss a show, you miss out. Welcome back, folks. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is the 3rd of March, 2014. 
I said what I said. Take it or leave it. Interpret it how you want. Make it yours. I'm just one single man out here who's frustrated with everything going on. And I'm revealing to you who's pushing the buttons and pulling the handles. It's up to you whether or not you want this country back in the hands of the people for freedom, liberty, and security, or whether or not you want the totalitarian uh, manner of government that is currently coming out of Washington, D.C. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to give a big shout out to Nick Tucker, Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook and distortedreality.podbean.com. Please support alternative media. You can support Free America Radio Network and Distorted Reality Network. Go to distortedreality.podbean.com and do what you can to support alternative media. I want to give a big shout out to... Uh, To Radio Rock, 92.6 The Blitz. Tom Slick and crew over there do a wonderful and fantastic job supporting and promoting independent artists, the indie artists. Check them out here on Radio Rock, 92.6 The Blitz on Spreaker.com. Or... Go to their website and listen to their show at radiorocktheblitz.blogspot.com. It's interesting to know that we have a society of people who seem who seem to be oblivious to what is going on around them. Says so it's to me, from what I've seen, it's a small part, a small group of people. They seem to think that if they close their eyes, the bad things are going to go away. They seem to think that uh, um, if if you don't talk about it, if you don't, you know, discuss it at all, it'll just go away. Well, I got to tell you, I have to tell you. That as far as I'm concerned, those people need to pack it up and leave. Those people need to pack it up and leave. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you even have the thought of someone disagreeing with you, and, and I have people disagree with me all the time, if you have a thought before you even air it or verbalize your thought, if you even have a thought that somebody's going to disagree with you, it stands the reason why you wouldn't want to say anything. But if you don't say anything, how are you going to know how they react? Well, flip that coin over. Let's go the other direction. If you say something and somebody else disagrees, what makes you think they're right? Why are you allowing them to bully you and browbeat you down to accept their opinion. There is no happy medium in that, folks. It's one or the other. But when you get to the point where the other person is just berating you and shoving their opinions in your face and telling you that it has to be this way, blah, 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 and they start getting verbally aggressive with you, don't you think it's fine time to shut them down or help them pack and get the hell out of the country? Well, they have a right to say what they say, too. Yes, they do. And I will stand next to them defending them against anybody who says they don't have a right to say anything. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when their opinions turn aggressive, when their thoughts go to the next step, you can say whatever you want, but you touch me, that's I'm going to scream assault and I'm going to take measures to protect myself. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to misunderstand me. You can yell at me, call me names, make up a few. I don't care. It doesn't matter. You touch me, I'm going to defend myself. And if you're going to verbally browbeat me, then, hey, if you're so insecure with yourself and you can't really let somebody have their opinion 
and you mm. have to be the one to shove your opinion in their face and make it the only one they ever need, you mm-hmm. have a serious, serious problem. I look at it this way also. That if you can understand why people are like that, which probably is harder than it really sounds, then I... If you can find out why they say that and why they approach certain things in that manner, you can, have, you can probably have a better understanding as to why they, they say what it is they say. But... Nobody wants to do that kind of uh, homework. Nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to to work that hard. They just want to ignore it. That brings me to this. Just because you close your eyes doesn't mean the bad things are going to go away. How can anybody? How can anybody say? That they have a complete understanding of someone when they're not willing to break outside of their boundaries, outside of their little cookie-cutter world that they've deluded themselves with, uh, in by their own preconceived ideas. How, how can anybody do that? You can't. You can't. It is what it is. You see it for what it is. They're aggressively verbal or they're verbally aggressive. Either one works for me. And then you have to understand that they're not going to back down until they beat you to a verbal, verbally beat you to a pulp and get you to change your mind their way. That's not compromise. That's totalitarianism. Hmm. Seem familiar? Christians are having their utilities cut off in Mexico. Uh, um, You know, you can't say this, you can't say that in most towns. You have free speech zones in most towns. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, if those people are going to be that aggressive against us freedom-loving people who love liberty and will stand up for people's freedom of speech and freedom to open carry then you know what those people that are in power that are doing that and commencing and implementing tyrannical laws they need to be taken care of which means let's help them uh, let's help them pack their bags and move to Mexico China or Russia how about that but I meant what I said earlier the politicians have 90 days 90 days, as far as I'm concerned, there's hundreds and millions of people out there that feel the same way, but I don't know anybody that has the balls to stand up to go do anything about it. So anyway. Yeah, the phone's ringing, folks. I don't know what to tell you. So anyway, do we stand up for what we believe in? Can we stand up for what we believe in? Well, if we do, expect resistance from the powers that be in control of everything that we have, such as the Internet, the, 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 I mean, everything. You name it, everything. And if they feel so confident within themselves that they're going to browbeat us and shut us down. They have another thing coming. They have another thing coming. They understand this. They understand that there will be resistance. This is why they have ordered up two and a half billion rounds of ammunition, 2,700 armored personnel carriers, and possibly more that we don't know about. They've ordered through the UN, UN troops and other troops from other countries to come to the US because they know that there's going to be resistance. They know it. I don't want to 
I don't want to harp on this too much. I don't want to give it too much attention, but uh, I think those people in the, the War of Independence knew the same thing on both sides. And the British, the king, sent the British army over here to take the guns and do some other things against the people's will. And they even taxed a breakfast a beverage, tea, hello. And people stood up and yelled and screamed and said, no, we're not going to take this anymore. Well, see, I don't even think that there's people here in the United States that have balls to stand up and say enough's enough, except for me and Nick Tucker and Alex Jones and Glenn Beck and Brian Keller. I, I've had enough. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm done with stupid people. Stupid is as stupid does as that line is from Forrest Gump, and you can look at Washington, D.C., and that proves it right there. Stupid is as stupid does. I'm done, folks. I'm done. No more stupid people. I'm not going to vote them into office. I'm going to hear their campaign. There's one that... That is out there that's uh, campaigning for president for 2016. I don't even need to hear what he has to say. I hear it from other people. I think it would behoove me and probably better my understanding of what he really means if I were to hear him speak about his platform. But why? I just don't get it, folks. I don't get it at all. Sarasota's home for R&B and soul. The Razorblade Express with Dave the Rave. What is reality? The foundation of reality is based on many concepts. Each person perceives reality differently. In the book, The Grid by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman, they explore the hidden infrastructure of reality. Get your copy today at Barnes & Noble and Amazon.com. The Grid by Marie D. Jones and Larry Flaxman. Hey folks, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome back. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce for the 3rd of March, 2014. Come join me on the Views Expressed at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, right here on Free America Radio Network at freeamericaradio.us. Come join me on the Wayne S. Pierce Show, this show here, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 12 noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. Also, you can check out the show at thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com. You can also check it out on Spreaker.com as well. What else, folks? I got a few minutes. I may not take the whole hour, but I've only got 20 minutes, 21 minutes left, so I may. There's a lot of things going on. Go over to Free America Radio on Facebook, if you would, please, and check out what articles I'll be talking about today. I found a whole bunch over the weekend, and man, oh man, oh man, doesn't get any worse. A lot of memes. I told you about the Connecticut Patriot Group fighting back against the uh, confiscation orders of the state. Why would Obama ordered, wonder why Obama ordered billions of those coffins for, oh, yeah, my favorite show is on Sheeple. I'd be like that. 
Huge news. DIA video admits agenda to depopulate now, in effect. The shocking video has just surfaced from the department uh, from the Defense Intelligence Agency website. What astonishes the writer here says from a sheepnomore.net. What astonishes me about the video is the fact that it openly openly promotes depopulation and further states that they are taking actions to prevent more people from populating the earth. Then they show images of bombs and chaos. I believe you'll find the promotion of such a video frightening. So check that one out. Court rules. School ban of patriotic shirts allowed. So therefore, see, there's your freedom of speech gone down the hole. So anyway, let the phone ring. I know who it is. The, uh, yeah, caller ID. I love caller ID. How about you? Shirts, yes. Mexi- now, now, now. Let me, let me, let me put it to you this way: in California, most liberal state in the nation, probably other than New York, says that you okay. cannot wear a T-shirt with the American flag on it. Many years ago, I saw the writing on the wall in California and left. Why? California is gone, folks. California is gone. There is no such thing as California anymore. It is now the People's Republic of China, the People's Republic of California, the People's Republic of the New World Order, because it's now a communist state. Now, I know. Well, geez, you don't live there anymore. How do you know? Uh, I was born and raised there. And I've studied California politics, so I know exactly how that state is run. And I've talked to a few people. Not going to go into detail, but I've talked to a few people. And I can tell you, it's not fun. It's not fun at all, folks. When you see a population of people being completely and utterly torn down, ripped apart, the state's constitution thrown out the door. It's a wonder that anybody in California still has rights. I I, I don't get it, folks. I really, really don't get it, honestly. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Ah, damn politicians. My mother always told me this country would be screwed if the liberals had their way. The only sanity I get is when I listen to Jeff Wagner on the conservative voice. Only on the conservative radio network. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce, and I want to tell you of a DVD that I have watched. It's a very interesting one. It's a film by Alex Jones. It's called Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement. For the New World Order, a world government is just a beginning. Once in place, they can engage their plan to exterminate 80% of the world's population while enabling the quote-unquote elites to live forever with the aid of advanced technology. For the first time, crusading filmmaker Alex Jones reveals their secret plan for humanity's extermination. Operation Endgame. That's Endgame by Alex Jones. Get it at Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome back. This is Reverend Wayne S. Pierce for the 3rd of March, 2014. How y'all doing? Hey, got a few minutes left here. I just want to 
pop this in and 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 let you know that uh, that if you want to know more about what's going on, this is not the only show you go to. You can go to the Views Express Live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, or you can go to distortedreality.podbean.com. And your host, Nick Tucker, will walk you through everything you need to know. If I didn't cover it, I'm sure he'll cover it. Now, here's something. There's a video that you need to go take a look at. It's on uh, Free America Radio on Facebook. I'll talk about this one a little bit today, too, on the Views Expressed at 4 p.m. Pacific. The video shows an NSA whistleblower on 9-11 foreknowledge in the information war. In this video, Luke Krodowski of We Are Change talks to former NSA senior executive uh, turned whistleblower Thomas Drake. Drake speaks about 9-11 foreknowledge in which the NSA had information that if shared could have prevented the 9-11 attacks. The NSA whistleblower discusses his own personal story and describes an inspiration, inspiring conversation he had with Snowden. Drake reiterates the fact that the U.S. government has repeatedly violated its own rules and has failed to adhere to the Constitution. There you go. There you go. I mean, it's just, it, it's done. It's, it's, there you go. I don't know how else to put it, folks. I really, really don't. Okay? I really, really don't. Everything that you have been told from the 9-11 Commission report, to you name it, everything that you have been told is a complete and utter lie. Every single last thing bit of it okay all of it all of it from don't dash don't with the little dash mark uh, after the word don't tread dot info second amendment on facebook It may just be time for us patriots to unite. If Connecticut is the first rallying point, so be it. Russian Navy on the move in Ukraine. President Putin from Russia has gone in and brought military, uh, brought his military into the Ukraine and literally is going to shut that place down. Okay. Michigan mom Julie Boonstra responds to Harry Reid. I demand an apology from Harry Reid. That's from radio.foxnews.com. Also on Free America Radio on Facebook, there's a meme from a sheepnomore.net says, quote, the easiest way to gain control of the population is to carry out acts of terror. The public will clamor for such laws if their personal security is threatened, unquote. Joseph Stalin said that. Now, I got to tell you, I, I, it's not easy. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and blow smoke for you. I'm, I'm just not. It's not easy reading these articles and understanding what is happening behind the scenes and how these articles came about, okay? I just, I really don't know. I mean, I'm, seriously, I do not know. Why people cannot see behind what is happening. I don't. I don't. I don't get it. People have this... How can I put this? Um, I 
I don't, I, I don't know. If you cannot see it for what it is and examine it and take it one step further and, and do your research, then you've got a major problem. Okay. If you, if you look out at what's happening and you're saying, oh, I don't want to see it. Really? It doesn't affect me way over here. Oh, yeah, it does. In the most rural parts of the United States of America, people don't think that what's happening in the world today is going to affect them. Well, yes, it will. Because those farmers that are depending upon that fuel to put in those tractors to work on their land, yeah, that fuel's going to go up. And the price of that wheat in that field is going to go up. And what's going to happen is the stores that they deliver their goods to, those prices are going to go up. And it will affect you. So either we do what we have to do by any means necessary right now, and we take matters into our own hands peacefully and civilly, or else we're going to be faced with looking down the barrel of a gun, figuratively speaking, probably not literally, and we're going to wind up being a country exactly like Russia. Okay? Now, if you don't believe that, doesn't really matter to me, because you're the one that has to wake up every day and look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what the hell just happened? Because I wake up every day saying, what information can I find to share with people so that it hopefully can open up their eyes? More importantly, open up their heart. I don't know what else to say, folks. I, I really don't. I mean, I do what I do to try to help you understand what's going on behind the curtains, behind the doors of Washington, D.C., behind your city council and your governor's office. But hey, if you don't want to see it for anything other than what you want to see it as, that's a huge problem. In other words, if you want to lie to yourself and say that everything's just fine, I, yeah. I think you just need to pack your bags and leave the country because, you know, you're obviously not going to get your way and you know that because the freedom-loving, liberty-loving people in this country are not going to allow you to have it. Yes, I said it. You know what conservatism is? Somebody defined it. I, I can't remember who it was. But I do remember a few years back. Somebody defined it in this fashion. Less government, more people. I believe that there are departments in Washington, D.C. that need to be abolished. There only needs to be a handful of people in Washington, D.C. I would say just working in Washington, D.C., specifically for the White House and for Congress and all of that, I don't think there should be any more people there that sh should be there that would be able to sustain such minimal government. Now, I know there's redundancies and blah, 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 blah. I, I understand this. I get this. But there shouldn't be 535 congressmen and women. There should be 150, three per state. That's it. Period. Done. Governor being one of them. And then if you still want to believe in this left-right paradigm, there should be one for one side and one for the other. That's it. 150. Done. They should only meet three times to four times a year, and that's the way it is. Or it should be. People get into politics in hopes to uh, get elected to be, uh, you know, a congressman so they can go to, go to Washington, D.C. and just live off the taxpayer's dime. That's called a professional politician, folks. Jesse Ventura had it right. He served his term and got out. I believe 
in term limits. I believe that every congressman should have two terms, and that's it. Done. History. You want to run again? You wait another. You wait four years, and then you can run again. But you run again on your record, and in that time, people in the general public are going to know exactly who you are. I believe there should be. I believe that if the president has, can have two terms, so should the congressman. But you see, dumb, stupid people are always going to vote their congressman back into office. You know why? Gimme, gimme, gimme. That's what they want. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You do for me, I do for you. You give me what I want, I don't want to work for it, and then I'll turn around and vote for you in the midterms. You'd be amazed at how many people got dropped off the unemployment uh, rolls uh, that are not being counted by the federal government, by the way, but they've been dropped off the, the unemployment rolls, and you'd be surprised at how many people have gotten that went out and got fishing licenses and just say, screw you, I'm going to do whatever I want, and that's just the way it is. Because they know how bad the government is. They don't want to depend on that. But I've also known people to go out and get, you know, jobs and, and uh, not what they were doing before, but they just had to take care of themselves. And I honor those people. I respect those people. Not the ones in Washington, D.C. that say over and over, oh, we have to create jobs. No government creates jobs. People create jobs. You give us, the entrepreneur, more incentives to build our business, to create our businesses, and we'll hire people. But see, Washington doesn't want to do that. Washington, D.C. doesn't want to do that. They want to enslave people, suppress people, all that. They don't care. They don't care. They never have cared, and they never will care. Come check out the views expressed, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, on RadioFreedom.us. We will talk more about what is happening in our country. We will talk about more of how you can get involved with Free America Radio Network. Go to Free America Radio Network, check out the site, let me know how you like it. In the meantime, remember May 16th, American Spring. Remember, this is midterm election season, and these folks need to be voted out of office. We need to get these jackasses out of office because they don't know what they're doing. They never have. They never will. They're uh, uh, professional politicians that are living off of your dime. Come join me, Views Express, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, at freeamericaradio.us. And uh, email me, freeamericaradio at unseen.is. Freeamericaradio at unseen.is. Talk to you later.